Uh, we know the White House uh, upped the budget deficit to one and a half trillion dollars higher than the Obama administration's previous forecast. Here to talk about it is uh, two guests. We have uh, uh, Jeffrey Myron, economics professor at Harvard University, and Maya McGinnis, president of the Bipartisan Committee for a Responsible Federal uh, Budget. So je let me get to what we just kind of heard. We heard kind of on track to kind of address the, the deficit and then nowhere even close. Ma Maya, let me start with you. Where are we in terms of about tackling the deficit in your view. Well, we shouldn't be tackling the deficit yet, and we're nowhere near close to tackling the deficit yet. We're still in the period where the concerns about the economy and getting a recovery that can stick trump the need to do something about the deficit today. But what we do have is these projections that are um, startlingly bad, really, an increase of $2 trillion over the next 10 years in debt beyond what was already unsustainable. And what that tells us is that we need to carefully think about as soon as the economy is strong enough to start switching policy gears, to put in place a plan that would aggressively bring down the budget deficits. We know we are on an unsustainable path, not just in the long term, but in the medium term. Jeff, let me bring you into this. I mean, don't we need to start addressing it now? Can we afford to kind of hold off in terms of addressing the deficit? Well, I think you can make a case that we should hold off on addressing it for a year or two because of the short-run concerns about the economy and getting out of the recession. I actually think there's some reductions that would make sense now, even given the recession, because they're just stupid policies, so wasteful expenditure is never a good idea. But I basically agree with Maya that it's the long term that's the key situation, and it was a crucial problem. It was a big deal well before we had the recession or the bailouts or the stimulus or the, any new health care, mainly because or especially because of existing government provision of medical insurance that was just skyrocketing out of control uh, to a lesser extent, but a significant extent, Social Security as well. My, how much of it, though, in terms of, you know, we've talked a lot about health care, and the administration says, you know, you've got to get health care under control to really tackle the deficit significantly. Others say, we can't even be talking about health care at this point. That just adds to the problem. What do you think? Well, help. Yeah, health care reform could either be done really well and be part of the solution or it can make things so much worse. So if the focus of health care reform is slowing the growth of costs, which are just out of control and they're busting the budget, that would do a world of good. Not so much in the short term, but sort of 10 years from now, out in the long term, that could really close our fiscal gap. That's the right way to do health care reform. The bills we've seen so far really aren't on track to accomplish that. Uh, perhaps the, the warning that comes out of OMB and CBO today will help push health care reform back in that direction. But if health care reform ends up just being a big new trillion dollar entitlement benefit, it may be for a good cause, but it comes at a time when the budget just cannot afford to layer on more benefits when we don't even have a plan to pay for the ones we've already put in place. So I think it's really important that health care reform either is all about controlling the costs, you know, expand coverage perhaps as a small sweetener, but that can't be the centerpiece, or you've got to shelve it until we've got the fiscal situation under control. Je Jeff, is there, I mean, have you heard decent ideas about how to reform health care in a way that would cut costs? Because I think pretty much, we were talking with Jared Bernstein today, everyone agrees that health care reform is important. David Malpass thinks it is too. The question is, how do you do it in a fiscally conservative way? Well, that, I agree. That's exactly the crux of the issue. When a lot of people use the word reform, they don't mean reform in the sense of cutting costs. What they mean is providing more health insurance to a lot more people, and that's just going to be much, much more expensive. There's certainly a way to do it. It's just not a way to do it that anyone likes. It's providing less government health insurance by, say, increasing the age of eligibility for Medicare, by introducing further co-pays and deductible and Medicare and Medicaid and things like that. The cost effectiveness, the alleged elimination, of fraud and abuse. That is small potatoes. It is so incredibly unlikely to actually work. None of that will have the desired effects of controlling costs. So while there's broad agreement we need to control costs, the question is how do you do it? And the main way is by having the government pay for less health care, and that's the one thing that the administration is not really talking about. I wonder what you think about other Obama administration proposals that are going through Congress because we had Douglas Holtz Aiken on earlier and he was saying, look, the reason their projection is dangerous is because so many of these proposals aren't going to go through uh, the way they think. Maya, what, what's your take on the fact that they're basing so much of this kind of on wishful thinking? 
Well, listen, I'm the first who points out budget gimmicks when they're in there. I think this budget is really bad, but I don't think it's actually because it's filled with so many gimmicks. There are assumptions in there which aren't going to happen. A lot of revenues, for instance, they assume would be raised for cap and trade, but they also assume all that money would go to extend um, some existing tax cuts, so it would be revenue neutral. And likewise, they've put in plans that would offset some of the costs for health care mm -hmm. that really aren't going to happen. They're not realistic, right. but they have committed to revenue neutral health care reform. We'll see. Jeff and Maya, sit tight. We're going to take a break and come back and talk some more about kind of really tackling the deficit. So it's just about 35 minutes after more in our roundtable. What's next and really what specifically the administration needs to do to bring it down? We're back in two. Welcome back. We are talking about the U.S. budget deficit. Rejoining us is uh, Professor Jeffrey Myron, economics professor at Harvard University, and Maya McGinnis, president of the Bipartisan Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Let me throw this out to both of you. Um, the New York Times did an analysis, kind of what led us to what was supposed to be a surplus to this deficit that we're looking at currently today. They pointed out that economic growth and the downturn was really responsible for a large chunk of it. I'm assuming that some of the administration kind of make that argument that once the economy starts to turn around, we'll work down this deficit. Maya, is that kind of a weak argument in your view? Well, unfortunately, we, we kind of had everything going against us entering this downturn. So uh, during the period of economic growth, when we should have run, been running surpluses, we were running budget deficits. We're bumping up against the starting of the aging of society, the beginning of the baby boom, already collecting Social Security. That's performing worse than it was expected to. Then the economy, the, the economic crisis comes along, and that obviously just tanks the situation. The budget numbers are terrible. And again, it's not this year that I'm worried about, but even as we come out, as as the economy starts to grow again, the deficit should remain much too large, primarily because not only is there no plan for deficit reduction, mm -hmm. most of the policies the administration has put forth would make the situation worse. Jeff, the president's going to come out in a few months uh, and, and lay out his budget. I mean, what specifically do you want to see in there that really addresses the deficit and really bringing it down? Well, I think the first thing we've talked about a little bit is Medicare. It's a slow the rate of growth of Medicare spending, and that means making choices that people are not happy about making. It means less care uh, provided by government uh, expenditures with higher age of eligibility and so on. Uh, the other big thing, if you're going to really cut off a huge chunk in one fell swoop is national defense. Okay, the war in Afghanistan, for example, is enormously expensive. Okay, if we were not waging that, that would be hundreds of billions of dollars that we would save in the national defense budget. A lot of other things hey, are small potatoes compared to these major programs, but there are zillions of them. There's $7 billion for the post office. There's 10 or $20 billion for agricultural subsidies. There's, in my judgment, a drug prohibition, which is actually 50 to $75 billion. So there are billions of government policies that are all adding to this budget situation. There are a few that are huge, like Medicare and national defense, but then there are tons of others that I think should be rethought. Hey, Maya, let me, let me ask you about the uh, defense. I mean, is that kind of becoming a consensus here? Joseph Stieglitz came on and talked to Carol and said we need to spend uh, less money on the military, and it even seems like Robert Gates wouldn't mind spending a little bit less money on the military, oddly enough. Is that turning into kind of consensus in D.C.? Well, it's, yeah, it's a tricky one because in defense, there's certainly some areas where we could cut some significant amounts of money. It's a huge part of the budget. Problem is there's some other areas where we actually are going to have to spend more because we've built, we've run down a lot of our capabilities. We're going to have to make some investments because we've been so active in the past years. So we're going to see a lot of defense shifting. I don't think we're going to get dramatic savings there as much as I'd like to if we could. I would also put Social Security on the table, and I think tax reform is just an absolute must. There's no way that the revenues that we're going to be collecting are going to to be able to support the spending we have. Everybody's made all sorts of promises about not raising taxes for different groups or at all. Right. Nobody can cut the spending enough to keep it in line with these okay. low revenues. So everything's on the table. Sounds like we all have to make some sacrifices. Maya and Jeff, yeah. thank you so much for your time today. Jeff Myron over at Harvard and uh, Maya McGinnis of the uh, Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget.